Views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Coming up on this edition of Today's Verdict, with the rise in sex crimes throughout our city, we decided to invite a well-known criminal law attorney to help you understand your rights if you have been sexually assaulted. Also, immigration is front and center now that President-elect Trump is forming his agenda. Many are on edge, which is a good reason for a discussion with our immigration expert. As you can see, we have much to get to, so stay tuned. Today's Verdict starts right now. Hello and welcome to today's verdict, the live and interactive show that gives you your legal rights and options. I'm your host and trial attorney, David Lesh. Well, today's verdict is always encouraging you to stay connected. Make sure to tweet us at today's verdict and hashtag ask today's verdict if you have a question. Also, make sure to like us and follow us on Facebook at today's verdict and check us out at bronxnet.tv forward slash Bronx Legal. And last, but certainly not least, don't forget to tweet me at David Lesh. Well, sadly, Nationally and locally, sex crimes have been on the rise. These include child pornography, rape, sexual assault, and many more. On set to help us navigate the subject is criminal law attorney Stephen Brill. Stephen, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Let's start from the beginning. Sure. Uh, sex offender laws, what are we really talking about here? Uh, essentially, we're talking about <laughs> individuals that have been uh, convicted of a crime that has some sexual component to it. Um, and as a result of that, they're charged with any number of sex crimes, and there are some significant consequences as a result of that. Well, I have a few here. Sure. So um, we'll start with uh, indecent exposure. Okay. All That's, right. Yes, so it's technically a, a sex crime. Uh, you know, it is, if we had to put it on the spectrum of, of severity, maybe it's closer to the, the, the less severe, but uh, it certainly is one where someone essentially on their own uh, exposes themselves to okay. someone in the public. C certainly one that I is uh, usually in the news is sexual assault. Yes, so sexual assault is somewhat of a, of a catch-all. I mean, that could, that could include uh, something uh, very serious like rape. Uh, it can uh, uh, include something like sexual touching. Um, uh, it, it can include sodomy. Uh, so uh, assault is, uh, is somewhat of a, of a large word where it's lots of sex crimes could be incorporated within it. Okay, there, we were also talking a little bit offset. We were talking about statutory rape, but let's start with rape first. If sure. We can. So um, just so we're clear, statutory rape is technically rape, okay. um, but we can talk about rape, which, which I think your, your question is, sort of the, the, the rape that essentially we all understand what rape to be, which is uh, a forcible uh, event where an individual, usually a male, um, will um, force themselves uh, in, in, some in sexual intercourse uh, with a female against that it, female's consent. And we hear a lot about date rape, um, which of course is rape. Uh, that seems, there seems to be certain of the sexual offender crimes that are on the rise. Um, certainly statutory rape, which we'll talk to about in a second, sure. but the date rape also seems to be happening more often. Is it, is it the drugs that people are getting a hold of and they're able to do, use that to, to ply their victims? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's definitely the case. I mean, there's certainly more sophisticated those drugs. I mean, we, in olden days, I guess they used to call it slipping someone a mickey where, right. where, there was, uh, where, where that happened occasionally, but now there are uh, many types of pills and drugs that dissolve in drinks and are easy to uh, to, to hide from someone who you uh, intend on sexually well, assaulting I know or you raping. Do, I know you do defense work and, do. You and you represent uh, several individuals who are um, accused of these, uh, of these crimes. Yes. How do, you, how do you try and help somebody who's accused of a, of a date rape crime? How do, you, what do you, how do you go about investigating? Yeah, well, you know, there, there, are, there are several ways to investigate that type of charge. A lot of them are very similar in other types of sexual cases as well. But in that case, I mean, certainly we would talk to our client and see exactly what went on. Um, 
you know, it, it could. It, Is there a know, toxicology that's done of the abso woman? Absolutely. Just to see the I drugs mean, in her system. Well, ab absolutely. I mean, certainly, if it's a date rape accusation, then yeah. then certainly they would have to prove that there was some uh, chemical right. that facilitated that particular. And also charge. the relationship between the two people. I mean, you know, whether they're not getting along, getting along. Or, yeah. Know. No. I mean, I, that's true mm -hmm. of many cases uh, as well. I mean, certainly the credibility of the person who's making the claim against the defendant certainly needs to be investigated and sized up. Unfortunately, there are occasions where. Uh, individuals will lie, sure. uh, uh, and um, and as a result, defendants will be arrested because of that lie. Okay, let's talk a little about statutory rape. What is statutory rape? So statutory rape is a rape, uh, essentially a sexual uh, assault, uh, and it's sexual intercourse between a male and a female. But the it is essentially what they call a strict liability charge, which is that uh, because of the uh, individuals that are involved, their ages. Um, it makes it uh, automatically a rape charge. Whether or not um, um, the, the, you know, the, the victim of that case uh, consented to the act or not, simply based on that uh, victim's age um, uh, and the defendant's age, uh, it is automatically a rape whether both of them intended for that to and be the case. And it's male, female, female, male, it doesn't matter. It is, it, it is. The, the, the law does not uh, identify gender. So. For argument's sake, you have a 17-year-old woman, girl, woman, mm. and you have a 21-year-old man, and the 17-year-old convinces the 21-year-old, I'm telling you, I'm really 18, I'm really 19, whatever it is, and the 21-year-old reluctantly says, okay, I, if, you, if, you really, I, if, I'm, if you, you're telling me, and they have intercourse, that's statutory rape. It is, uh, and uh, that kind of scenario happens more than you know. Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, individuals out there that look older than they are, sure. uh, and certainly they may profess to be older than they are, uh, and, um, and if it, it is determined that those individuals have intercourse and those ages are confirmed, then irrespective of how they held themselves out or how they, uh, how, if they lied about their age, it is statutory Wh rape. Which That's leads right. to a registry. Yes. Right? What do we mean when we say you you're have to be a registered sex offender? Okay, so registry it became uh, a, 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 an issue after a New Jersey case that uh, derived Megan's Law, uh, and that's how most people call it. Uh, here in New York, it's called uh, SORA, or Sex Offender Registration Act. And basically, any conviction, uh, not any, but most convictions of sexual crimes lead to the obligation on the part of the individual who's charged with that sexual crime to register, which means to let authorities know who they are, where they live, uh, if they've moved. Now, who, anybody can see this registry? I can see this, you can see it? Uh, yes, uh, and, and so the, 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 more severe the, indiv the more severe the risk of recidivism by the individual, uh, the more uh, available uh, that person's identi uh, identity. Would be somebody else. Uh, yes, but, uh, but that's right, it is open to the public. Is there any, any getting off of this list? Uh, it, it is very difficult. Um, there, you know, certain crimes call for many, many years to be registered. In fact, even if you're a low risk, a low risk for recidivism, which is the lowest you can go right. of being uh, 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 registering? Um, you, you need to do. You need to register for 30 years. Wow! Uh, and anything higher than that, it's a lifetime registry. So uh, it has become extremely serious and and very much an, an issue when you're a criminal defense attorney in how to resolve a case. What kind of cases are you seeing in your practice? Uh, so you know there are many sex crimes cases. I mean certainly rape, uh, statutory rape, and sex trafficking. Um, personally, I, at this point in time I happen to be involved in a federal uh, case which involves that. Now we were looking at, uh, we were talking earlier on set, um, off set about that woman in California who may have been kidnapped for the purpose of being, traf being, being trafficked uh, in Mexico or someplace. Um, is this on the rise? Uh, it, you know, it, it's hard to say if it's on the rise or that they're just investigating it better and, and, and making more arrests, uh, but certainly it is uh, you know, unfortunately, a popular uh, thing among uh, individuals here in New York City, even and maybe the younger generation. And all states ha have sex offender laws that are that mirror each other, or do some have, you know, different crimes, different 
different penalties? Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I think each state is different. I think it, 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 in general, they're somewhat similar, but absolutely, they're called something different. Um, they have different jail time sentences or any sentences that, 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 are, that correspond with it. But for the most part, each state has very similar sex crimes. Now, when you're defending um, uh, uh, somebody who's been, uh, been you know, accused of this type of crime. Yes. Is there any pleading out with the uh, with the district attorney's office or does it did these cases end up going right to trial? Yeah, no, uh, there's certainly lots of pleading out. Sorry. Um, they, they, um, the, uh, you know, it, it's treated uh, like any criminal case where you engage in negotiations with the district attorney uh, and you try to resolve the case in some favorable Thanks. fashion, but there are these consequences that make it um, uh, more involved in working out some type well, of because plea, but they're absolutely Because clear. there are certain crimes I know that the district attorney's office takes very seriously, I would think, you know, anything involving a child and chi child molestation laws, you know, they, they probably take these very seriously. Yeah, there's no question about that. Yeah. Uh, so th 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 there's no question that you are going to, or a defendant is going to be faced with significant uh, time if they're convicted of something like this. I'll give you an example real quick sure. on the federal case that I'm doing, which is the sex trafficking case. Um, and this is federal law, but uh, the federal let the Congress essentially said that because uh, of the nature of the crime, in, in my case, uh, individuals are accused in trafficking minors. In, in my case, the, the, the allegation is the females are 15 and 16 years old. Um, there is what they call a mandatory minimum sentence attached to that, which means that um, irrespective of what a judge wants to do with the case um, or what you work out on the case, a defendant, if they're convicted of that, must be sentenced to what the statute says. You know, and I think there's I, a very few. As a society, like we're so afraid of some of the predators as well that we, you know, we've we've enacted these Halloween sex offender laws. Yeah. Tell the viewers a little about what that sure. is. Sure. So that doesn't exist here in New York. So um, it, it, you know, because it, it's it, a little it, bizarre, by the way. It, it is. It is. Uh, it, it exists, and uh, I happen to know exists in Texas and, and places of, of that nature. But essentially. It, it, it stands for the proposition that someone who is a convicted sex offender uh, must not give out candy on the It looks like they Halloween. can't even dress up for Halloween. And yeah, they're, they're restricted on their behavior on Halloween only because the idea is that Halloween is a, uh, is, 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 is traditionally a children's holiday and because the individual is a convicted sex offender, uh, the government wants to make sure that they don't engage in the Halloween festivities. Uh, and you know, the, the Amber Alerts, yes. which is kind of related to uh, sexual offender uh, yeah. laws, uh, I think is, is one another way that we're really trying to make sure that we prevent anything bad happening uh, uh, to children. Do you find it's helpful, not helpful? I yeah, mean, well, look, I mean, I certainly, in, as a citizen, it's, it's very helpful. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily connect it to sex cases. I know um, just from my experience, just, you know, observing Amber Alerts and, and reading about them, I mean, they, they most of the time involve uh, individuals who, who are either kidnapping children or, or more likely there is some familial relationship where there's some custody issue. Um, it doesn't necessarily involve sexual activity, but there are some that By the do. way, where do we find you? Because we don't have too much time. Uh, yes, so uh, we're at uh, 115 Broadway, uh, uh, and our uh, website is sbcriminallawyers.com. I love it. Uh, yes, and uh, I can give you a phone number if you'd like. Give me a phone number. 212-566-1000. All right, and you're going to come back in maybe I six months, and we can uh, talk about some uh, criminal statutes <laughs> enacted. Uh, my favorite subject. I All would right. love to. All right, we have to take a quick break, but don't worry, we'll be back with more Today's Verdict right after this. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today.
Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Adopting a new pet is a rewarding experience. And Shelter Pets make Super Pets. Your new best friend will steal your heart, bring you happiness, and enrich your life for years to come. You can make a difference in the life of an animal. Adopt and bring home a Shelter Pet today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. to stay in the know about the latest happenings in Espanol, check out Dialogo Abierto, BronxNet's own Spanish show, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Channel 67. The latest in news, arts, culture, politics, and what's going on in your neighborhood. Dialogo Abierto, the best way to stay connected in Spanish. See you there. Te esperamos. Welcome back to Today's Verdict. I'm your host, David Lesh. We are always encouraging you to stay connected. Tweet us at Today's Verdict. Our immigration statute allows many people to migrate from a foreign country to the United States for temporary or permanent residence. But recently, legal and illegal immigrants have been in fear these past couple of months, and rightly so. Joining us today to discuss this topic is immigration attorney Jennifer Oltarsh. Jennifer, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I want you to know, Jennifer, out of all the topics that are ever requested on this show, it is always immigration that is front and center. So. Uh, I want to kind of get right into it. I want to talk a little bit about visas. Because okay. um, many people ask, uh, how do I get a visa? What is a visa? So I'm going to start with you. What is a visa? Well, there's two types of visas. There's immigrant visas and non-immigrant visas. Non-immigrant visas are the ones that cover people who are coming here temporarily. They can be for tourism. They can be for work. They can be as farmers. Um, these are temporary. Uh, they're all set forth in statute, um, various things. Okay. Artists, uh, professionals, farm workers, hotel workers, um, temporary. They're, they're temporary, though. Okay. Let's, let's break it down a mm -hmm. little bit, because I know there are, there are, let's start with the people who want to get married to somebody who okay. is not from this country. So let's, do, let's talk about the there's somebody who's already married, okay. and now they're going to apply. I mean, these, these are immigrant visas. These okay. are visas for people who plan to immigrate here permanently. So. Um, one way to do that is if you marry a U.S. citizen. You marry a permanent resident, you can do it as well under some circumstances, but it takes a while because you go on a priority wait list. Now, this is different than if you're looking to get married to the person. I'm talking about, let's say, you're Correct. married. So I'm married to somebody, I get married in another country, or let's say I'm, 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 and I, I come, I'm here and I'm already married. I want to make my spouse a citizen like me. What's the process? Well, if you are a U.S. citizen and you have married a foreign national, that foreign national can adjust in this country if they entered legally. Um, for example, you entered with a visa waiver from a European country, at least in New York, you can adjust your status. Okay. There are some places where you cannot. Um, if you go out of status, but New York is one of those places where you can regularize. Do you have to get? Do you, do you have to apply within a certain amount of time of being married or? No. To, you, you don't? You can apply the next day. The next day, yeah, okay, yeah. whenever you want to. <laughs> yes. All right, so now you want to get married. Yes. All right, so it's a little different now. You have a fiance, somebody comes into the, uh, into the country legally, let's say they're a student, and you're an American and you want to get married. How does that work? Well, I mean, if the person has documentation, you can just go down to City Hall and get married. The person is outside the country. Um, and they've come from a country where you, it's very difficult to get here. China, an island, for example. Um, there is a possibility to file a fiancé visa. Okay. Fiancé visa allows someone who has the intention to marry to come here. They can see if they like the United States, and then they can marry. This is for spouses of permanent residents only. Now, how do you go about applying? I mean, do you ha have to show any proof that you're not you haven't had any convictions or are there any issues any issues Certainly. with your character so I mean, what would you have to do yeah I, I mean you for a US citizen um, convictions don't make a difference unless there are certain types of convictions for example like in the prior segment a sexual offense this would make a difference because the United States wants to protect foreign nationals from being the victims of certain crimes so there most crimes do not make a difference so let's but say it's some, statutory rape 
Th this uh, could, conviction. yeah, this could. could, yes, you have to show that you are not a danger to society. And if you are on a 30 year um, list, you're going to have a hard time showing that. Is your fiance or the, your prospective spouse who's coming from the other country or, or is here, have to show anything with respect to I character? I mean, foreign nationals always have to they be do. subject cannot be subject to a ground of inadmissibility. And there are a bunch of criminal grounds of inadmissibility. Give me an example. Smoking pot, okay. possession of pot, and that, sale of pot. And that would be enough? Yes, yes. Drugs are a big no-no to the immigration service. Theft, uh, you get convicted of a theft-related. Uh, theft in the United in New York can be jumping a, a subway. A, a, a ter a yeah, stop. I mean there there are some crimes that are de minimis, but yeah, you if certain theft related crimes will make you inadmissible, and then uh, this could be more difficult or impossible. Now, obviously, some research has to be done as to whether or not this marriage is yeah. true or a sham marriage. What we've yeah. seen the movie I Green mean, Card. What what are we talking about here? <laughs> that the consulate usually um, conducts an interview to ascertain that the marriage, at least the, in a fiancé visa, that the intention of the marriage is valid. Um, but uh, in the United States, yes, there's investigations to make sure that Okay, the what do we mean when we talk about a family visa? Well, family visas, I, I mean, again, immigration law is all statutory. Family visas are the visas that you can apply for an immediate family member. They're all set by, forth by statute. Now, this is very important because a lot of the viewers yeah. um, have somebody that they're related to who already is a citizen here and feels that they can they can get permanent resident status based on the fact that their their child uh, is a resident or their mother is a resident? How, how tell me? So, family-based immigration: mother, father, sister, brother, child. Uh, these are immediate family members. Not grandparent. Not grandparent. Okay. Although there are certain times where a grandparent might have passed derivative citizenship to a parent and then passed to a child, but it's very rare. Okay. Um, yeah, you can file for your, for example, you are a citizen or a permanent resident and you have a child who's an adult or a minor, you can apply for them. Sister and brother can apply for their sister or brother, although some of these go on wait lists for a very long time. Now, why is that? Um, because there's only a certain amount of visas that are granted every year and uh, for example spouses of citizens unlimited uh, but they go against the overall cap and so brothers and sisters is the lowest category takes very long time which leads us to our discussion of our president-elect uh -huh. and caps uh, let's talk before mm -hmm. we talk about deportations let's just talk about caps right um, I think if, if uh, Hillary Clinton was elected, maybe the caps would, would increase for a certain amount. What, what do you see happening? Well, those caps are statutory, so yeah. I, it's not Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. I mean, the, this is legislation. I, I don't see those caps changing. Um, I, what I do see are, are perhaps uh, greater enforcement efforts. Um, there are certain laws or change of procedure that Obama did, which I think will probably remain. For example, if you are a person who entered the country illegally and you married a U.S. citizen, you can't adjust in this country. And your departure to your home country will cause a ground of inadmissibility. But there's waivers. President Obama moved those waivers to the United States. And I have a feeling Donald Trump will not change that. So, I mean, this is a path for many people, and, it, and it's a possibility, and Obama uh, expanded it to parents, uh, to a whole class of individuals. So I have a feeling Donald Trump is not going to change that particular aspect. Well, we know the, the platform he ran on yeah. uh, was really a, was a hard platform on the immigration issue. What, where do you think he will hit hmm. those who are not legal? I mean, I am hoping that that was puffery. Um, I am hoping that when the reality of deporting 11 and a half million people, um, at least that's the government statistics, I have a feeling that they're larger than that. I hope when the reality of facing that, he has to deal with that, then his position will moderate a little. Um, and, and he said that he wants people to be able to regularize, he just wants them to go home. And there is a system in place to make it as, uh, not as difficult as some people believe. And there are, individuals from other countries that we really want here, the, the extraordinary ability visa. Right. Um, what does that mean? 
Well, if, if you are a person of extraordinary ability, I mean, I think that that visa was made for Albert Einstein. But if you, you nobody are can, nobody else comes in on that, vi that visa? Yes. You can be extraordinary in the arts, in business, uh, in the sciences. Um, if you are a person of extraordinary ability, you can ask the Immigration Service to get your permanent residence. And if they believe you're extraordinary, you get to stay here along with your family. Um, another one, um, this, this visa, foreign workers visa. Now that's where I guess another company, uh, a company is requesting you travel to the United States and work for them? Is that a foreign Well, there's visa? several, there's actually several type of foreign worker visas. Um, there's foreign worker visas for people who have um, college degrees that are considered specialized. There's foreign workers for people who are transferred to the United States from foreign companies like Mercedes-Benz transfers someone to the United States. It's foreign workers for hotels. This is a popular one with, with our president-elect. He needs people to right, so he act. wouldn't roll that back. I don't think so. Okay. No. Those, those visas, I assume, will, will the, remain are, the same. Are fairly safe. Yes. Um, the climate is, is, you know, there are so many people, there's so many viewers who, who are watching who are, are definitely afraid of where things are going. Um, I don't think there's going to be a wall. I don't think, um, in terms of other people getting in, that may be tougher. But deportations, do you see mass deportations occurring? Well... I mean, under the law right now, there's constitutional provisions, and you can't deport someone without there being certain due process, including going to a court case. You have a right to appeal, you have a right to go into district court and ultimately up to the Supreme Court if you make it. I mean, those constitutional pr protections are there by law. I, I mean, Donald Trump would have to suspend those, and that would be a huge act that we haven't seen since World War II. By the way, so, where, where, where do we find you? What's your, some contact oh, information, please. I, I mean, I'm, I, my office is in Manhattan, and you can reach me probably the easiest through my website, which is www.altarsh.com. Um, and since immigration is such a hot topic here, you're going to come back, right? We, I would love to come back. If, right. you, if you want me, we if want viewers you. want me, it would be my pleasure. All right, well, that's all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us, and of course, you, the viewers, for watching. If you missed any part of today's show, be sure to check it out on www.bronxnet.tv. Also remember, if there is a legal issue or topic you'd like to see on a future edition of Today's Verdict, feel free to contact me at David Lesh, at David Lesh at bronxnet.org, or tweet us at Today's Verdict, and make sure to hashtag Ask Today's Verdict. From myself and all of us at Today's Verdict, always remember, know your rights, know your issues, reach a verdict. We'll see you next time. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you.